Although it's not convertible season in Connecticut, I have a pretty special one here for you all. This is the 2023 Porsche 911 Turbo S Cabriolet. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking you through some of the performance figures, tech features, then I'm gonna drive it, give you my thoughts on it, as well as do a POV drive for all of you who wanna see what it's like behind the wheel. But before we get into that, be sure to smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification. As you can see, I do a lot of cool stuff on the channel and you won't wanna miss out if you're an enthusiast. So with that said, let's get into the video. The 2023 Turbo S Cabriolet is the top of the food chain for Porsche, packing supercar performance combined with cutting edge technology. It starts at $216,000 and features the 3.8 liter turbocharged flat six that produces a whopping 640 horsepower and 590 foot pounds of torque. It's mated to an eight speed PDK dual clutch transmission that puts the power down via all wheel drive to all four wheels, making for a zero to 60 time of just 2.7 seconds with a top speed of 205 miles an hour. Every generation, the 911 Turbo S gets more and more impressive and this generation certainly doesn't disappoint. And on the inside, you could see this is a, just such a beautiful interior i mean every surface in this car is leather wrapped this is a very well optioned car of course but i mean the workmanship and craftsmanship in a porsche interior is just truly something to behold i mean the way all the stitching just lines up perfectly i know this may seem like a nitpick thing but in other high-end cars i've seen like things just don't line up everything just is just so perfectly put together in this car it really is great attention to detail and you have this nice carbon fiber inlay here very very nice and the driver's gauge cluster is pretty cool you do have two virtual screens off to the left and right in the center you have your traditional tachometer you can control some of the stuff off to the right you can see your drive modes and whatnot uh, you hit this little button here and you can change what you see in the left screen very simple very straightforward i like that the technology isn't too distracting though it's there if you really want it to be there but you could also just keep it driver focused which i think is important and then you have your drive selector right here on the steering wheel you can see you have wet mode sport normal sport sport plus which in sport plus you do hear the exhaust valves open up which sounds pretty cool and then moving on to the infotainment center you can see it's a nice size here it's very clear easy to read touch screen uh, you do have wireless apple carplay and android auto this is porsche's new software they just revised it for this year you could see it almost looks more android like i do like it i think it's a nice refresh um, really has everything you could possibly need you can see here if we go into the apple carplay it'll just take a second to start up and it does go full screen it's not like other cars where it cuts off on the sides or you have borders uh porsche has integrated this very very nicely it's not laggy at all i mean just take a look at that that's pretty much as good of an experience as you can expect um one cool thing hit the media button you do have the burmester sound system in this car which i can attest to is amazing it is definitely worth it if you're spending this kind of money on the car and with the convertible you do want a system that could really really kick it and this system is amazing moving down to the center console here they've kept it pretty simple i'd probably get paint protection film on this because the gloss black can scratch very easily you'll see a micro scratches and um you know fingerprints uh pretty quickly um, I would say the only thing I don't really care for is the shifter. I, I, I would rather have like a meteor shifter. I think it would just add to the experience, but I do like that they kept physical buttons for like your temperature and things that you have to hit multiple times for the HVAC controls. I think it just keeps things more simple and easy. Here you can see you have your active exhaust button, which we'll take a listen to now. <laughs> And then moving on, you do have 
the front lift system, which when you approach things will give you some extra ground clearance, your traction control, and your spent suspension firmness button. Down here too, you could also see that we have heated and cooled seats on both sides, which is nice, and these are the controls for the top. It's a pretty quick top. And one last thing I'd like to point out is take a look at the camera system. It's been greatly improved. It's the new 360 degree camera system where if you hit uh, certain camera views, you could see, like take a look at that. If you're really approaching, like say you're close to a curb or something and you wanna make sure that you're not gonna hit, I mean, this camera system is just amazing. You hit the button down here and uh, you could scroll around the vehicle. I mean, I've seen this on other cars, but having this in a 911 definitely helps, especially when you're in tight parking situations. Getting in this car right away, it's a very special experience. Uh, the driving position's great. Visibility overall is great. I think, you know, when people approach this car, they think, oh, I'm getting the best 911. It is the most expensive, or it's this, or it's that. I think the thing you have to consider when can, when buying a 911 is what are your needs? Where do you live? Where are you gonna be driving it? If you're gonna be driving this in a city environment, this is not the car for you. It's very tightly sprung overall, whereas if you were to get a Carrera 4S, you would still get plenty of performance and it would be a little bit more forgiving. This is for somebody who will have uh, exposure to roads where you could really freely drive the car and open it up. This has a lot of power. It has more power than probably most of you will use unless you're gonna track the car. But in that case, you would probably rather prefer a GT3. But I think the strongest thing about that the Turbo S has going for it is that it really can do everything. If you wanna take it to the track and you want something that's gonna pretty much beat everything <laughs> uh, in sight, this is your car. If you want to go on a road trip, this is your car. It's comfortable enough to do that. You want to put the top down and cruise, this is your car. You want to be able to have a car where if you get caught in light snow and you want to daily drive it all four seasons, this is your car. But I would only recommend this for somebody that once again has exposure to roads where you could even use half this performance because you know, for most people, you're just not gonna be able to use it. So I would recommend probably going for a Carrera 4S, but getting all the nice amenities in the interior like this one has, because you can get this in lower trim levels. That's the beauty of 911s, but. The Turbo S is definitely for the person that wants the most powerful kind of GT oriented car possible. And for those of you who would like to see what it's like to actually drive behind the wheel of one of these, we're gonna switch to our POV mode now. The Turbo S is a very nice place to be. I wish I could put the top down for you all today, but it is just freezing, so you'll have to bear with me. You're not gonna get the full exhaust noise. And I can't give it too much throttle today because of the temperatures, the uh, summer tires lose a lot of their grip and uh, therefore the car could break away fairly easily. But I mean, this truly is a special experience. Now in the past few years, the Turbo S has gotten a lot more expensive, but it really does feel worth every bit of that price point. It really does. It's just so well put together. There are plenty of other exotic cars that are within this price point that just don't feel as well built as a 911. And uh, the, you know, it truly is a testament to what they've accomplished over refining these cars over the last 50 years. Get a little sound. Wow, you get those crackles and pops on the downshifts and the overrun. What a special car. Right around 3,000 RPM, listen to all those little crackles and pops. And then if we bump it over into normal mode, just let it do its thing, take it out of manual mode, 
it really does become a lot more comfortable. It really, really does. Um, I wouldn't say that this is as comfortable as a Carrera, you know, a base car or a C4S. It's definitely a bit more firmly sprung than that. But it definitely isn't going to beat you up like a GT3. It's a little bit more versatile in that sense. But what's really neat is right here you have your drive mode selector. You throw it into Sport Plus. Within about 30 seconds or so, you really do notice a huge difference in the firmness of the suspension. And you get some really aggressive <laughs> burbles on the overrun. <laughs> the power is just immediate too. The days of turbo lag are gone. So here's my final thoughts on the Turbo S. It's an amazing car and in the short time that I've experienced it, it's truly, truly an impressive offering from Porsche. But I think really the only thing to keep in mind is unless you're going for the status or recognition that you've bought a very, very expensive 911, if you're just looking for a fun daily driver, I truly think that getting a GTS or a 4S will be plenty for most people to have a, a, a daily drivable fun experience. You have to be somebody who really, really wants a lot of performance to, to justify getting one of these cars because for the average person, you'll never use it, especially if you're just somebody who kind of cuts around town. A GTS or a 4S will definitely do the trick and you could spec the interiors just like this car where you know you can get everything wrapped in leather, the carbon fiber inlays. That's one nice thing about Porsche is they really do let you customize almost just about anything in these cars. I mean yes, the Turbo S you get a little bit of a wider stance on the car and it looks more aggressive on the outside but to the untrained eye nobody's really going to notice. I think from the standpoint of you know how far Porsche has come with the Turbo S, this is just an incredible, ex incredible car, incredible experience. There really isn't anything bad to say about this car because it's gotten to a point that Por Porsche has refined this design so many times. There's, it's really hard to pick something out that isn't good about the car. I think just once again, my only thing is, don't buy the car just because it's the best one buy it because you have a need or a use for this level of performance. Otherwise, just get a 4S or a GTS and I think you'll be just as happy. That wraps things up for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, turn on that bell notification so I can keep providing awesome videos like this for you all. Before we go, I'd like to say a special thanks to my friends down at Porsche Fairfield for providing today's car. They're an awesome, super helpful, friendly group of people to work with. And if you're in the market for one of these specifically, if you want this car, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you to contact them. With, with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video.